Hey everyone, you heard a lot of new announcements and learned a lot throughout the day. So we're just gonna end the event with a very casual fireside chat. We'll be going over some of the highlights and answering commonly asked developer questions. My name is Mary and I'm part of the Google Assistant Developer Relations team. And co-host of this fireside chat is my colleague and previous office mate, Jessica. Oh, remember when we used to go into the office? Oh, so weird. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I'm Jessica and I'm a developer advocate. And we've collected questions from developers and we wrote them down on post-it notes. And we've actually recorded this a few weeks back. But if you have any questions during the fireside chat today, please ask them in the chat window and we'll answer them live. So grab a drink and join us for some afternoon tea. I'm actually drinking jasmine tea right now. How about you, Mary? I'm having a chai latte. Mm. Oh my gosh, yum. And also yeah. look out for any special cameos from our fur babies throughout this conversation. Cool. So before we begin the Q&A, here's a quick recap of the main highlights from today. If you're a mobile developer, App Actions is now available for anyone with an Android app. You can now use App Actions to integrate your app with Google Assistant for so many different use cases. And if you're a native developer, we want to just remind you that we hear you. We're heavily investing in discovery and monetization opportunities for you, and we're constantly improving the developer experience. So with that, let's jump into app action questions. So Jessica, I get this question a lot previously for app actions, and I think now that it's readily available for all developers, let's tackle it first. As an Android developer, how do I get started? Do I need to build something new, or can I just integrate my existing app? Yeah, that's a great question. And usually the first one because it, it's the most immediate. So the great thing is with your Android app, what happens is you already have all that functionality and adding app actions adds that voice capabilities to it, which is great. So all you need to do is support deep links. Once you've done that, you can build out your app action. We've broken this down into four steps. And the first one is to tell the assistant on how to use your app. And so this is giving the assistant just, hey, I do X, Y, Z. And then the second step is when the assistant does have those requests, how do you process that? These are your fulfillment URLs. And then the third step, of course, is testing it out and making sure it works. And then the fourth is deploying it. And if you want a hands-on tutorial guide on how to build this, you could go and check out our code lab that's all about integrating an Android app and app actions. So with that, when it comes to telling the assistant on how to build or what your action can do, those are called built-in intents. And we've recently launched many more built-in intents. And I believe we now have over 60 built-in intents. And I can't list them all. So Mary, I have a pop quiz for you. What are okay. some of the built-in intents that are available? All right, so I'm not gonna list all of them either, but I can list some of the categories like social, productivity, shopping, games, communication, finance, food and drink, health and fitness, transportation, and finally common. Common just means generic built-in intents. Like for example, if you wanna get a summary of your account or a check-in order that you just recently placed or just actually opening up the feature in your app. Now with this in mind, a developer may look at the list and say, I actually don't think any of these built-in intents fit me what can they do in that case? Yeah, every Android app is unique and that's the best thing about the ecosystem. And so what we have is custom intents and those are similar to built-in intents where you can connect your assistant to your app. So what you first need to do with custom intents is you need query patterns. And these are the examples that are different ways a user could say something for that particular functionality. So let's say I have a cake making action and I want to give my users a way to say, hey, Google, open baking fun and start making cupcakes. I would need to provide several different ways for a user to say something like that. So someone could say something like craft cupcakes or produce cupcakes. You can also pass in parameters. So if a user says something like, Start making 18 cupcakes. That number 18 is passed as a parameter, allowing you to provide your users with instructions on making 18 cupcakes versus the usual 12. And just note that parameters are available in certain support types, which include text, date, time, and number. All right, I think I'll choose 18 cupcakes over 12 any day. <laughs> right? <laughs> 
So let's talk about the technical details around some of these new app action functionalities. Can you talk about the foreground app invocation? Yeah, of course. So with foreground app invocation, this allows built-in intents to be matched without requiring the app's name to be mentioned while a specific activity is in the device's foreground. In other words, users can talk to the app to quickly get things done. And so if a user says something like, order me a right Mountain View, the app can use that input to set the destination field to Mountain View. You could also add this functionality by updating your actions.xml file and adding the required foreground activity attribute along with a new intent. And a lot of app developers actually have a strong web presence. How can they make use of web inventory? Yeah, that's a great question. So let's start off with inventory in general. So let's say you have a boba restaurant app, right? And the user can say, order milk tea from boba restaurant, which is great. But for the assistant to understand that you have milk tea as a menu option, you need to add this to your inventory. You could use inline inventory where you list out the different menu items as entities, as well as their fulfillment URLs for each entity. Now for web inventory, you can use entity set reference tags and URL filter attributes to generate the URLs for fulfillment. Web inventory is a great option for those with a strong web presence and your in-app deep links are organized around publicly available web content. So now it's my turn. So the last question before we move on to the native developers. While building new functionality, being able to get support and to test functionality during development is so critical. Are there any tools to support Android developers? Yeah, definitely. So there's an Android Studio plugin called the App Actions Test Tool. The test tool basically parses your Actions XML file and then creates a preview of your app actions. That way, you can test your app actions without having to deploy the production version. Also in Android Studio, you'll find a lot of our documentation and support resources if you need it as well. All right, so let's shift gears and talk about building conversational actions for the Google Assistant. Now, before we get into the questions, Jessica is going to recap some of the major announcements in this area. Yeah, so we announced two new English voices for our developer community. And this really takes advantage of the improved proxy models and will sound even more natural. We also announced recently in July a new conversation tool called Actions Builder and Actions SDK. These tools allow you to manage the conversational logic in a state-based like modality. This new tool has improved NLU and decreased latency, as well as a new graphical representation of the conversational paths. Something else that was discussed today is support for action links for Actions Builder. So action links allow you to generate URLs that you could use in marketing campaigns that when a user clicks on it will invoke your action on Google Assistant enabled devices. And something else we announced is that we have two new beta programs to improve count linking flows that will allow simple streamlined authentication via apps. The first one is link with Google and the second one is app flip. And finally, if you have an action that's currently being used and it uses dialogue flow, if you want to use some of these new features and convert over so you could use the newest tooling, we've launched our migration tool that will convert your dialogue flow agent into an actions builder project. And I hope you saw it in the keynote today. We also display the new learning hub and stories lobby interfaces for smart displays. If you missed it, these are cards that display on your smart display to help you explore and discover new storytelling and learning actions. Now, as a developer, I think my first question would be, how can I get my content on there? Yeah, those were really cool, right, Mary? Like, those hubs were oh, amazing. So a developer can actually get their content on there by using implicit invocation for games, education, and storytelling in their Canvas actions. And so you can add this implicit invocation to your project through the Actions Builder in Settings. And just like your main invocation, you have your implicit invocation transition to the appropriate scene. And you could also use Actions SDK to do this too. The great thing is if your action has more than one of these, let's say your action is a game that is educational where it tells you stories, you can use all three of them if you like. So you can have multiple implicit invocations working for you. So I have a question, Mary, and I know that somebody had a lot of involvement with games. So what type of games work best for smart displays and where can I learn more? Yeah, we have to admit, we 
probably planted this question because we wanted to talk about it. <laughs> Over the last few months, we actually took on the role of being game developers ourselves, just so we could use our tools to build cool new games for smart displays. That came with a lot of learning from that development journey. So we wanted to publish those as best practices, lessons learned and what not to do. Uh, so as you may have heard, there's a new assistant games portal. This is our new website for game developers. And on there, you'll find these new sources, for example, the new game design guidelines and case studies for how we built these games. Uh, the main call I wanna make is when you're building games for smart displays, it's a really new and exciting space, right? There's new interaction models where you're using your voice as a primary mode of gameplay and having these really rich graphics sit in your players' homes. But another way of thinking about it is you're just actually elevating your existing game design expertise with unique capabilities from the Google Assistant. So there's a lot of familiarity with that as well. And when you're building these games, we used a couple of core assistant technologies such as Interactive Canvas and the new Actions SDK. Jessica, can you talk a little about how these products work together? Oh yeah, totally. So Interactive Canvas connects the visual and the interactive app with an action. So you can think of your action as the conversational interface that processes the user's input and handles the conversation logic and is built using Actions Builder or Actions SDK. Now your web app contains the visuals, the animation logic, and that's built using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And by using Interactive Canvas API, you are connecting these two. So for example, when a user says something like, turn the screen blue, the action handles the user's input, uses scenes to manage the conversation logic, processes that, and generates a Canvas response along with metadata for the device. And this metadata most likely will contain the color blue. And in the web app's callback, when it receives that metadata of changing the screen blue, it actually will change the screen blue. Now, one cool benefit of smart displays is being able to combine visuals and audio really nicely. How do you sync visual and audio elements when you're developing for smart displays? Oh my, yes. The worst thing would happen is, let's say you have an animation happening and the noise happens later. Ooh, that oh, would, no. <laughs> right? that would not be fun. <laughs> so what you could do to make sure that these two things are in sync is using on TTS Mark. And let's say you have a storytelling action, right? Every time there's a puppy character mentioned, you want the image of the dog to do some animation and to bark. And so you could have this functionality by adding a unique mark name into your SSML, like the word puppy dance. Then that gets registered on the TTS method of the callback object in your web app. So every time your action receives that mark name of puppy dance in your SSML, the animation and the sound will happen at the moment of that TTS. And finally, I hope this is exciting for people who are new to Interactive Canvas. How can developers get started if they actually don't have a smart display currently? Oh my gosh, this is one of my favorite questions because I'm always amazed by how developers are so eager to build using the latest tools, even if they might not have the devices. And so you could use Action Simulator. And the Action Simulator simulates the interactivity of your action. And we provide different device types. So if you personally don't have a speaker only device or a smart display or an Android phone, you could still build for those users and be able to test out and see and hear how your users will be experiencing your action. Yeah, we personally used it all the time when we we're building out these games to test on multiple devices. Right. So check it out. All right, so we covered a lot of questions here and I also finished my tea. So I think we should call it a wrap. Thank you so much for all the questions from before and for the ones that you asked on the chat. Yeah, and if you wanna get connected to our community, uh, check out our Twitter account, Actions on Google. That's where we post up all our announcements and join our Reddit community. That way you can ask questions and hear from other action developers. And if you wanna start building and learning how to build, check out our docs our GitHub samples, as well as our collab, so you can get step-by-step -step guides on how to build for Google Assistant. Thank you so much, really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>